everyone, welcome to this fourth video in the series about the PCX certification. Um, my name is Johan, together with me uh, is Jeffrey. And today we're going to um, dive into the physical architecture of um, uh, a design. So we already drew a logical construct of the previous video. So in the previous video we talked about the logical design. Um, and what you see here is a direct connect towards a, uh, a data center, right? And today yeah. we're going to dive into what this means from a physical architecture perspective um, uh, uh, in, in, and in that specific detail. Yeah, so in the, I think in the first video or in the second video, we, we drafted a conceptual diagram of, well, uh, a hybrid cloud architecture. Yeah. We zoomed in a bit on how to create a logical, uh, logical constructs out of that. And now we're zooming in into, well, one specific area of that logical design we're going to put in all the physical stuff. And just to be sure, a physical design has nothing to do with physical components. It's not Cables. about physical service or those are part of it. Yeah, but yeah. a physical design is about putting as much detail into your design that an engineer can go build it. Right. That's, so yeah. because a, a conceptual design is like a conceptual overview for the customer. Yeah, that, that's important to the business. Yeah. They can read a conceptual design and they understand what they are, what value they're getting out of a solution. Yeah, yeah. And, and a logical design, uh, we create that for the architect of the customer? Yeah, yeah, that's, and, and basically um, it, it's the architect's view, so it kind of creates a bridge between, well, the owner's view, the business view, and, and the engineering view. So, um, yeah, it's kind of the, uh, the, the middle ground for yeah. uh, and putting in uh, all the details that you need to, uh, to explain what, what decisions you made and all the reasoning behind it. Um, and the physical design is all about, you know, actually building it. So you need all kinds of detailed information, IP addresses, uh, connection speeds, locations, all that kind of stuff. Then goes into the physical design. So if you take a look at, uh, well, we, we put some nice square boxes there, direct yeah. connect to a to an on-prem data center. If you actually give that information to an engineer, you would say, well, I'm, I'm missing all kinds of details. You need a private VIF, you need a public VIF, what kind of speed? Where do you want to terminate it? All, all kinds of questions. So, yeah, let's, let's dive into it. Um, let's start with a, uh, with a physical router on-prem. And direct connect to a, uh, well, to AWS in this case, we will be using uh, BGP. Um, so the engineer will need a, an, an AS number, an autonomous system number. So I'm just putting in some fictitious data here, AS65000. Um, the on-prem uh, router will connect through, well, a network that the customer will need to provide. So the customer network to a uh, direct connect location, a DX location. And that is basically uh, where we're going to consume, uh, well, the service. And it's, this is being provided by providers like Equinix and that kind of uh, yeah. partner. So we have a uh, provider edge here. And we're going to connect to a um, direct connect router. Um, so in this side, we will also be needing, uh, well, IP addresses. So putting in some fictitious data here, 2.2.2.1 slash 31. And on this side, we will be connecting to a component that's called the, um, oh, apologies, the compute gateway, uh, the, the VPC gateway. Um, and this will eventually connect you to, um, well, the BGP instance inside of AWS. So this will be AS65002, for example. Um, we're going to consume a one gig uh, per second connection. You can choose between a one gig or a 10 gig or a hosted connection um, based on the sizing requirements, the assessment that we did, well, during the discovery phase, we're sizing it for a one gig uh, connection in this case. Um, and we need to set up BGP peering, so all the stuff that the engineer needs to do uh, peering, so we need to put in um, uh, the BGP configuration, we need to configure the neighbors. Um, so this is the configuration for the on-prem router, so let's say we have 2.2.2.2 slash 31 here, 2.2.2.2 slash 31. Um, of course, we have some on-prem uh, networks here. So let's say we have 10.0.0.0 slash 24 and 10.1.0.0.0 slash 
zero slash 24. And we need to propagate those networks. We need to advertise them into, uh, well, the BGP uh, protocol. So we need our network statements here. Um, 10.0.0 slash 24. Remote AS, well, 6502, et cetera. You get the idea. It's not about the BGP configuration itself. No, it's about the level of detail. Exactly. So we're putting in IP addresses, connection speeds. Um, well, this is kind of delivered as a service, so there's not a whole lot of um, physical stuff that we need to design there ourselves. Um, but the connection speed is important. Um, yeah, this kind of gives, gives the engineer all the information he needs to start building this Direct Connect. So you see there's a whole lot of information beneath the covers of um, a simple logical construct or logical design. Yeah, and we need to cover this for every logical bit in the uh, in the design. For instance, um, um, what to do with uh, load-based teaming on your uh, your your switches, or uh, what to do with in, in case of a um, horizon deployment, what to do with load balancing uh, and your uh, unified access gateways. So this level of detail needs to be covered for every bit of the logical design. Uh, in order for the engineer to be able to deploy um, uh, the design you created. Um, yeah, and on average, it comes with a configuration workbook. So if the design is ready, um, you'll create a configuration workbook that contains that level of detail, the numbers of components you will deploy, um, and it, it'll make it easier for the, uh, for the engineer to deploy it. Yeah, and that's actually a good point because a lot of the, uh, well, the designs that we, we come across, they, um, they kind of use design decisions to, well, to, to, to articulate all the physical design stuff. Well, in my opinion, that's what a configuration workbook is meant for. So don't create design decisions based on, okay, we're going to peer with neighbor 2.2.2.2. So that's not a design decision. That's a configuration element or yeah. configuration detail. Your design decisions, which we will cover in our next video, I guess, um, are much more fundamental to your design. They're yeah. not meant to do configuration stuff. No, yeah. correct. Cool. So, uh, Jeffrey, thanks again for, for explaining how uh, uh, this part of the VCDX process works. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, for you, yeah, thanks for watching. And uh, uh, again, like Jeffrey mentioned, in the next video, we'll cover the design decisions. Uh, for now, again, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time.